Kaya. Hello, Kaya. Thank you to receive us today in the headquarters of Dior. We are here with Adrian Cheng, okay. CEO of Key Eleven. Good to see you guys. So how are you, Kaya? Everything good? You look, you look uh, très chic. It's a really a great pleasure. I'm very thrilled because we we are in uh, the archives. So I think that is the right place to talk about craftsmanship. I think all self-affair is a universal language. It's a universal common kind of a technique. And we always mix different types of materials and techniques to create uh, um, the self-affair and, uh, and, and making it into a, such an art piece. This bag has an incredible name, no, Adrian? It's called <laughs> The Lady Die. Can you imagine to have a bag called the Lady Di? We all love Lady Di. She's one of my, you know, I'm sure, you know, icon. icon. Gaia, can you explain the story of the bag? How suddenly this bag become the Lady Di bag? Okay, yeah, the, talking about this bag, I was talking really about that it bag. Uh, so it was the 1995 and uh, um, Madame Chirac, uh, our uh, first lady gifted this bag to Lady Diana and it was the occasion of the grand opening of the Cezanne Exposition in Paris. Madame Chirac, uh, probably with the suggestion of Monsieur uh, Arnaud, because she wanted a Dior bag, uh, she, she ch uh, chose this bag. At that moment, uh, the bag uh, was called uh, Chouchou. It was in microfiber, so it was not at the top level for Lady oh, princess, Diana, for yes. a princess. So legend says, literally, that in one night the new leather bag was born. Then it was very iconic because it was designed from the beginning using different iconic elements. For example, what we call the canage, that is a wicker wave uh, typical of the Napoleon III chairs that um, Christian Dior used since 47. So I think, you know, looking into the history to find new inspiration, I think that influence is very powerful. This is part of our uh, Craft and Guild Foundation uh, preservation technique called Bai Bao Qian. The specialty about this box is the craftsmanship that can date back to uh, Ming Dynasty more than 500 years. So if you can see, these are all jade, agate, ivory, different types of uh, precious uh, stones that is inlay onto uh, this wooden specialty box. So you're conserving, let's say, the way how to do that box. We're preserving 30 artisans who knows how to do this uh, technique. Here is a dressing case, an antique made of Bai Bao Qian uh, techniques. It was made in the early Qing dynasty and artisans need to carve the shape on the wood first and then designed it uh, and then delicately uh, cut into different materials and design the pattern. So many times you, you go back to, uh, you know, to go back to historical techniques in order to find a lot of new inspiration and you add onto uh, your current modern design using uh, techniques that has been in your house for a long time. So for example, like we have a, we have a bowl like this. These are actually Bai Bao Qian techniques. So this kind of signifies modernism yet using um, self-affair techniques to it. And it captures this power. It has this power of creativity, uh, culture, also innovation, which is the, the ethos of uh, K11 Craft and Guild Foundation. I think Gaia, Dior, has to be the same vision of Adrian on the conservation of techniques. I should say, Adrian, I'm fascinated about your, your work. What I really found amazing about craftsmanship, that is a sort of common language between different cultures and every culture uh, give a different twist, a different uh, aspect, but to the, with the same technique. So it's fantastic to talk about craftsmanship and feel that we are connected uh, about beauty uh, in a globalized world. And so are fair. Exactly. At this moment, I really would like you uh, to join me. I want to, to show you uh, behind the scenes of our atelier about the making of a Lady Dior. And so we jump in Italy and we go to Florence. The 
first step uh, choosing the leather, the right one. It will be on the table, flat, and then with a template, uh, the shape of the different part of the bag will be cut out with a very sharp knife. And as you see, it's amazing because it's an hand cutting. So everything in this bag is made by hand. When you have all the different pieces uh, in leather plate, they are assembly using a wooden mold to keep the different elements uh, rigid, stripe, and especially then to sew the round corner uh, so that they are really perfect. So Savo Fair uh, in the world, anywhere around the world, uh, Chinese techniques or uh, French techniques, or it's a cultural knowledge that is universal. And new generation has to feel it. So that's why in K uh, K11 Craft and Guild Foundation, we have an apprenticeship program that we launched last year. And we hope that we can recruit a lot of new generation artisans in order to learn about it, but also to influence and uh, tell their peers what Safa Fair actually means. It's very important that we have people that try to follow this Savoir Fair because it's not easy. It needs a lot of uh, artisan in a lot of uh, times. And I think it's good that today everything is so quick that some people still take the time to do amazing things. I think this is fantastic. Congratulations. No? I think we have a great lesson of uh, handmade bag, let's say, couture bags. And uh, even me, I know the house for so many years. I learned so much about your bags. Yeah, Honestly, because, it's a lesson yeah. for myself too. I learned a lot. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Great seeing you guys. I learned a lot too. That's a, that's a great kind of a journey. And also how we should all respect uh, Safa Fair and also how we pass on to the next generation. Thank you. It's very a pleasure. Much.